Hebridid takeover of India. The fall of the Mughal Empire. The story of how the British Empire took over India is a complex tale of political intrigue, economic exploitation, military conquest, and cultural transformation. To understand this, we must first look at the fall of the Mughal Empire, which created the conditions for British expansion. This 20-minute story will explore the decline of the Mughal Empire, the rise of the British East India Company, key events like the Battle of Plassey, and how the British eventually established their rule over the Indian subcontinent. Its influence extended across much of the Indian subcontinent, with a rich culture that combined Persian, Indian, and Central Asian traditions. However, the empire began to weaken after the death of Emperor Aurangzeb in 1707. Aurangzeb's reign, marked by nearly constant warfare, religious intolerance, and attempts to impose strict Islamic law, had drained the empire's resources. Upon his death, the Mughal state faced multiple challenges. Succession struggles. The mules had no clear rules for succession, which led to bloody conflicts and power struggles among Aurangzeb's descendants. This constant fighting for the throne weakened the central authority. Internal rebellions, various regional powers, such as the Marathas and the Deccan, the Sikhs in Punjab, and the Rajputs in Rajasthan, challenged Mughal authority, often rebelling and carving out their own territories. Economic decline. The long, the glory and decline of the Mughal Empire, the Mughal Empire, which reached its zenith under rulers like Akbar, Jahangir, and Shah Jahan, was one of the most powerful and prosperous empires in the world during the 16th and 17th centuries. Wars fought by Aurangzeb had drained the empire's treasury. Corruption and poor administrative policies further exacerbated the economic problems. External threats. As the Mughal military became weaker, external threats like the invasions of Persian ruler Nader Shah in 1739 and Afghan ruler. Ahmad Shah Durrani in the 1740s and 1750s exposed the empire's vulnerabilities. The sacking of Delhi by Nadir Shah was a major blow that demonstrated the empire's decline. Amidst this backdrop of decline, European trading companies, including the British East India Company, saw an opportunity to expand their influence in India. The Rise of the British East India Company The British East India Company was founded in 1600 as a trading entity with the goal of competing with Dutch and Portuguese traders in the East. Indies. It established its first trading post in India, at Surat, in 1612. And over time, secured other locations such as Madras, now Chennai, Bombay, now Mumbai, and Calcutta, now Calcutta. Initially, the British were one of several European trading entities in India. However, several factors allowed them to gradually outmaneuver their competitors. Strategic alliances with local rulers. The British skillfully played local rulers against each other offering military assistance in exchange for trading privileges and territorial rights. They were adept at exploiting rivalries between Indian states to gain concessions. Military superiority. The British East India Company maintained a private army, which included a significant number of Indian soldiers, known as Sea. This army was trained in European tactics and equipped with modern firearms, which often gave them an edge over Indian forces that still relied on traditional methods of warfare. Political and administrative acumen. The British used a combination of diplomacy, bribery, and coercion to further their aims. They established administrative and revenue systems that were often more efficient than those of the fragmented Indian states. The decline of the Mughal Empire created a power vacuum in which the British could maneuver. However, it was not until a series of critical events in the mid-18th century that the British began to truly consolidate their power in India. The Battle of Plassey. The Turning Point 1757. One of the most significant turning points in the British conquer conquest of India was the Battle of Plassey in 1757. This battle was fought between the forces of the British East India Company, led by Robert Clive, and the army of Sirajudola, the Nawab of Bengal. The background to Plassey, the province of Bengal, one of the richest in India, was a major center of commerce and trade. The British had established a significant presence in Calcutta, and the French, their main European rivals, were also active in the region. Siraj Udola, the young and ambitious Nawab of Bengal, was suspicious of the British and French and sought to curb their growing influence. In 1756, he attacked the British settlement in Calcutta and briefly captured the city. This incident, known as the Black Hole of Calcutta, where several British prisoners died in captivity, angered the British and prompted them to retaliate. The Battle Robert Clive, a British officer with a knack for military strategy and political manipulation, led a small but well-trained force against the much larger army of Sir 
Clive employed a combination of military tactics and psychological warfare. Most importantly, he forged a secret alliance with Mir Jafar, a high-ranking officer in Siraj Dallas army who felt he had been slighted by the Nawab. On June 23, 1757, the two armies met at Plassey. Due to Mir Jafar's treachery and the defection of a large portion of Siraj Dallas forces, the battle turned in favor of the British. Siraj Dallas was defeated and later executed. The Aftermath the victory at Plassey gave the British control over Bengal, one of the most prosperous regions in India. They installed Mir Jafar as a puppet Nawab, and he rewarded them with vast sums of money and trade concessions. This marked the beginning of British political dominance in India. The expansion of British control. 1760 to 1800s. After Plassey, the British East India Company expanded its control over India through a combination of military conquest, alliances, and diplomacy. Several key events illustrate this process. The Battle of Buxar, the company's forces, led again by Clive, defeated the combined armies of the Nawab of Bengal, the Nawab of Awad, and the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II. This victory gave the British the Diwani rights, or the right to collect revenue. In Bengal, Bihar, and Arisa, thereby establishing their economic dominance over a large part of eastern India, subsidiary alliances and doctrine of lapse. The British used these two policies to further expand their control. Under the subsidiary alliance system, Indian princes were forced to accept British residence representatives at their courts and maintain British troops, paying for their upkeep. The doctrine of lapse, introduced by Lord Dalhousie, allowed the British to annex any princely state where the ruler did not have a direct heir. Defeat of regional powers The British systematically defeated regional powers, like the Marathas, Tipu Sultan of Mysore, and the Sikhs in Punjab through a series of Anglo-Maratha wars. Anglo-Mysore Wars, and the Anglo-Sikh Wars, thereby consolidating their control over much of India. Administrative Reforms The British replaced the old Mughal administrative system with their own. Introducing English laws, language, and education, they created a centralized bureaucracy to govern India. And by the early 19th century, the British East India Company was no longer just a trading entity, but a full-fledged colonial power. The Decline of the Mughal Empire and the End of an Era while the British were expanding their control, the once mighty Mughal Empire continued to decline. After the death of Aurangzeb in 1707, the empire became a shadow of its former self, with later Mughal emperors holding little real power. The 18th century saw the Mughal court riddled with factionalism, corruption, and a lack of resources. The final blow came in 1857, during the Indian Rebellion, often called the First War of Independence. Discontent with British rule had been simmering for years, due to various reasons including harsh economic policies, cultural insensitivity, and the annexation of Indian states. In 1857, Indian soldiers, or sepoys, in the British army revolted against their officers, leading to a widespread uprising across northern and central India. Although the rebellion was ultimately suppressed, it exposed the vulnerability of the British East India Company's rule and led to the British crown, crown taking direct control of India. In 1858, the British government dissolved the East India Company and established the British Raj. With Queen Victoria declared as the Empress of India, the last Mughal Emperor, Bahadur Shah Zafar, who had reluctantly supported the rebels, was captured, tried, and exiled to Burma. Now, With his exile, the Mughal Empire, which had been reduced to a symbolic entity, came to an official end. Conclusion The British Empire takes over India. The British takeover of India was a gradual process that took nearly 200 years, beginning with the establishment of trading posts by the British East India Company and culminating in the establishment of the British Raj. The fall of the Mughal Empire, weakened by internal decay, external threats, and regional fragmentation, created a power vacuum that the British exploited through diplomacy, military might, and political strategy. By the end of the 19th century, the British Empire had firmly established its rule over India reshaping its political, economic, and social fabric. However, this colonial rule also sowed the seeds of discontent and resistance, which would eventually lead to India's struggle for independence in the 20th century. The story of how the British took over India is a story of conquest and colonization, but also one of resilience and resistance that would ultimately lead to India reclaiming its freedom in 1947.